For each of these problems below, we're going to write the first five terms of the sequence with the given nth term. The uh, subscript of A is going to be a natural number called counting numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Over here, you're going to have what's called an nth term, and it will receive any value of n from the counting numbers that you want to plug in. A sub 1 is when you replace n with 1. Negative 1 half to the first power is negative half. A sub 2, you replace the power with 2. Negative 1 half squared is positive 1 fourth. And you proceed down the line. All you're doing is increasing the n by 1. The subscript and n will match. In the next example, we have a sub n. Our nth term is sine of n times pi over 2. a sub 1 is when you replace n with 1. So that's sine of 1 times pi over 2 or pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. a sub 2, replace n with 2. 2 pi over 2, that's the same as just pi, your twos cancel, sine of pi is zero. a sub three, sine of three times pi over two from your unit circle, that's negative one. And you proceed with the same type of progression as you did in the first example. a sub four, that's four pi over two, which is two pi, sine of two pi is zero, and so forth. There are also sequences that are defined recursively this is just one example of that. You have a first term given, a sub 1 is equal to 6. The next terms will all be built based on the previous result. k plus 1, that's the next term of the sequence, that's defined as 1 third times the previous value. Notice that the index is 1 less squared. So a sub 1 is 6. A sub 2 will be 1 third times that previous value squared. 1 third times 36 is 12. Then for A sub 3, you have 1 third times that previous answer squared. It gets recycled in. 12 squared is 144 over 3. That divides out to 48. A sub 4 will use your result from A sub 3. Plug in 48, a sub 4 is 1 third times 48 squared, and you guys helped me out in class, that was 768. And then finally, a sub 5, the fifth term of the sequence, is 1 third times the fourth value squared, and that was really large. Match the sequence with the given nth term with its graph. Now, I gave you a couple of options on graphs in class we picked from, but what we did is we took our nth term, we built some terms, and then we matched it with the dots to see which one matched more appropriately. If your nth term is defined as 10 times n over n plus 1, your first term is 10 times 1 over 1 plus 1, that's 5. a sub 2, 10 times 2 over 2 plus 1. That's 20 over 3. That's a little bit more than 6 and a half, 6 and 2 thirds. Our third term was 10 times 3 over 3 plus 1. 30 over 4, that's 7 and a half. And that was enough for us to pick this second graph. Notice when n was 1, we had 5. When n is 2, we had 6.6 .6 repeating. When n is 3, we had 7.5, and, and so forth. If you keep building terms, you eventually have a trail of points that close in on 10. It turns out that this graph is monotonic because it's increasing every time, but it's also bounded because it'll never get higher than 10. Why is that? If we take our nth term and we apply a limit as n goes to infinity, our limit is 10, and that tells us that our graph is bounded above by 10, and it's monotonic because each value increases along the way. Also in class, what we did is we picked a really large number like 99, subbed it in, 10 times 99 over 99 plus 1, 
that reduced to 99 over 10, which is 9.9. .9. So no matter how large you make this n value, the most you can get at the end is 10. And so you'll approach 10. In the second example, we have a sine alternating term, negative 1 to the n. If n is odd, negative 1 to an odd power is negative 1. If n is even, negative 1 to an even power is positive. So this is going to alternate positive and negative depending on the value of n. When n is 1, negative 1 to the first over 1, that's negative 1. a sub 2, negative 1 squared over 2, that's positive 1 half. a sub 3, negative 1 cubed over 3, that's negative 1 third. So you can tell our values alternate and sign, which both of these graphs had alternating signs, positive and negative. But the first graph would be appropriate if we only had the sign alternator negative 1 to the n. When we started dividing by n, our values started getting closer and closer to 0. Now this graph is not monotonic because you don't always increase or always decrease. It bounces back and forth, it fluctuates. If you were to apply the limit as n goes to zero, eventually these dots would keep dancing back and forth across the n axis until you hit the n axis or got really close is probably the better way to say that. And then we threw in a wild card. We're actually going to use factorials quite a bit later when we do a ratio test for series, convergence or divergence. Um, remember that n factorial is defined as n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. And you keep counting down until you reach 1. You're multiplying all the way through. So for a quick example, uh, suppose I had 5 factorial. Let me get this ink to come up. There we go. So just as a quick example, suppose I had 5 factorial. This would be from 5 down to 1, multiplying all the way. 5 times 4, that's 20, times 3. That's 60, or I'm just actually going to call that 6, times 1, that equals 120. You can use your calculator to do factorials if, say, the number gets really large. Like, say, if you had to calculate 12 factorial, you would go into your math screen, arrow over to PRB tab. And I think the exclamation point in your graphing calculator is like the fourth option. I'd have to look to be certain, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, what I wanted to do in this example was to lead you through simplifying factorials involving n terms instead of just straight up numerical terms. It's important to be able to calculate numerical factorials, but it's a very quick formula. Take the number with the exclamation point, start there, count down to one consecutively, and just multiply all your numbers. Because you do count down consecutively, this numerator is 3n plus 1 times 3n times 3n minus 1. And you would keep removing 1 until eventually towards the end of the list you hit 3, 2, and 1. The denominator is 3n plus 3 times 3n plus 2 times 3n plus 1, so forth. You keep losing 1 and eventually you hit 3 times 2 times 1. Well, you get a total cancellation of the numerator and all but the first two terms of the denominator. And that leaves 1 over 3n plus 3 times 3n plus 2. Here's another way we can look at that. Suppose I take this fraction. Now, I didn't do this in class, but you can absolutely do it. Um, maybe I leave the numerator alone.
And then my denominator is where I start counting down. And I would have 3n plus 3, 3n plus 2. And then I can also go back to factorial notation because my next term is going to be 3n plus 1 and the countdown proceeds, but I can stop there and recall that factorial. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And then I note that that factorial and that one totally cancel, and so I end up with a one over, and you know how this ends. It ends actually right back here. Oops, let me make that look a little better. Sorry, y'all. We land right back there. I'm just going to erase that. 